Thanks for supporting the channel by clicking the links in the description box. And thank you so much for liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. And now let's get into this conversation. Hey, what's up guys? We are going to have a conversation about Andrew Gillum. And we've discussed him before on the channel, but there's been some more information that has come out since we talked about the previous encounter, shall we call it, that was exposed between him and he says uh, some friends that he was meeting up with to just hang out with after a few uh not oh my god I said a funeral <laughs> well it was kind of the death of some things in his life meaning the death of possibly his career as a politician but he said he was meeting up with some friends after a wedding that he was attending in Miami Florida in 2020 but before we get to the topic at hand for the sake of YouTube, I'm just going to go over Andrew's bio a little bit and then we'll get to the details. So if you don't really wanna hear all of this, then you can fast forward to that section of the video. And I will try to put that in the description box because YouTube has been tripping a little bit. So anyway, Andrew Demise Gillum, Born July 26, 1979, is a former American politician who served as the 126th mayor of Tallahassee, Florida. He served as a Tallahassee city commissioner from 2003 until 2014. He was first elected at the age of 23. In 2018, Gillum became the nominee of the Florida Democratic Party for governor of Florida when he won the Democratic primary election over a field of five other candidates, including former U.S. Representative Gwen Graham and former Miami Beach Mayor Philip Levine. He competed against the loss to Republican U.S. Representative Ron DeSantis in a close election, and Gillum is considered to be a progressive Democrat. And some people believe that the race was in a way stolen from him, but that's just the opinions of some people. Anyway, he was born in Miami and raised in Gainesville, Florida. He is the fifth of seven children, and he graduated from Gainesville High School in 98. And he also went to Florida A&M University known as FAMU. He served as president of the FAMU Student Government Association from 2001 to 2002 and was the first student member of the FAMU Board of Trustees. In his political career background, he served as the city of Tallahassee commissioner, the mayor of Tallahassee. He was investigated for some corruption and misuse investigations during his time as a mayor of Tallahassee, but those things, even though they were investigated, he was cleared by a grand jury of any wrongdoing. He's got so many things in his professional career that bolted him to the status of being able to even be a contender to run for the governor of the state of Florida and lots of honors and accolades as well. And in May of 2009, he married Rashada Jai Howard, a fellow FAMU graduate, and they have three children. So now let's get to the current story. The male escort that was involved in the hotel room scandal where he was found in Miami just laid out completely buck naked on the floor of the bathroom in the hotel. And I get there and I have another drink. Um, this one's uh, prepared for me. And the last memory I have is sitting there drinking. The next memory that I have is I am in a bathroom with no clothes on with five police officers. And the EMT worker said, 
um, your friend had an overdose. The escort is saying that Andrew Gillum, he's basically a liar and he knowingly took drugs that night. So even though Andrew Gillum came out and made the statement that he had too much to drink, but he did not engage in any drugs, he never really denied that he engaged in any physical activities, if you know what I mean, but he definitely denied doing any drugs. So this escort is pretty much coming out and saying that's not true. So the guy, his name is Travis Dyson. He's deciding to break his silence and he just wants the world to know that what Andrew Gillum is saying is definitely not true. So Gillum, he said he did not knowingly take any drugs that night and he believed that his alcoholic drink might have been drugged. And I'm sorry guys, I'm not laughing at the situation, but it, I mean, it is kind of like, he's not saying that he didn't have any drugs in his system, but he's saying that he might have been drugged. So he's basically saying, yeah, there might've been some drugs in my system, but it wasn't me that took it. So somebody might have spiked my drink. And they asked me, did you take anything? And I'm like, no, I didn't take anything. I, um, I said, I was drinking earlier, but you know, that was it. And he says, are you aware that you have been vomiting, that, that you could have choked on your vomit? I said, no. Even now, you don't know what happened I, to I, you. And now I have no idea what happened with three hours. So the escort, he's saying, well, hey, that's not true. So according to Travis Dyson, who is an admitted male escort, and you know some people call them a sex worker who was in the hotel room he said during an interview with GQ he said Andrew Gillum passed out in the Miami hotel room and it was because he was under the influence of an ecstasy type drug mixed with alcohol that he knowingly took himself he also said that he met Andrew Gillum a few weeks prior to the incident off of the gay dating app Grindr and that they had allegedly done drugs together multiple times throughout that period. So Dyson, he's saying that even though he took the nude photos of Andrew Gillum also and sent the images to his friends, it wasn't done with ill intentions. I don't know about that, but that's what he says. He says, but instead it was to show Gillum what happened once he came to. And he also claimed that despite the side of events that Gillum is describing, he was not set up because he knew what he was doing. He said he took care of Gillum for hours before he accidentally overdosed himself. And he also said that another male escort from that night didn't know Andrew Gillum and called 911 once he arrived and saw what had taken place, saw like what was going on. And so he's basically saying, look, all I ever tried to do was help Andrew. And even though some people may be trying to put it out there that somebody was out to sabotage him, somebody was out there to try to destroy him, somebody was out there to try to tear down his political career so that he could not either ever run for governor again or have any type of place in political standing or in a political office, in a leadership role in politics ever again, it wasn't me. It definitely wasn't me. It wasn't my intent. Some people may say me taking a, a photo of him lying out completely buck naked on the bathroom floor was because I wanted to have some get back or wanted to have something in my back pocket to come back at him in case he tried to come at me with some, you know what? But that really was not what my intent was. And hey, I don't know, but that is what he's saying. What do you guys think about this? Now, when I talked about this before, I said, I don't, it was like, was this a setup by others or a downfall by self? And in my opinion, I said that I felt like it was a downfall by self. And yeah, maybe it may look like it was a setup because somebody took pictures of him, but I didn't believe that somebody brought him to this hotel room with ill intentions, gave him a Mickey, put drugs in his drink and, and caused him to pass out and then 
you know, did anything to him unbeknownst to him and then took photos of him while he was passed out on the bathroom floor. I just didn't believe that. I wasn't there, wouldn't pay to be there, would not want to be anywhere in that vicinity, but just from the way things look and also when they did that interview, he and his wife did that video on the Tamron Hall show, that interview, to me, it just seemed like it was a hasty PR stunt. He said that he has been bisexual for years. Um, you put it out there is whether or not I identify as gay. And the answer is I don't identify as gay, but I do identify as bisexual. And then in my opinion, I'm thinking, well, why are you saying that you you are bisexual? Because when you came out and you made the statement after being found in that state and with the state of affairs of what was going on, he never admitted to any sexual activity. He pretty much just denied having taken any drugs and said that if anything was possibly in his system, it was because somebody must have drugged his drink. But he didn't take anything knowingly, but he never admitted to doing anything physically with anyone there. So I was thinking, well, if nothing physical happened, which again, I know guys, I may see, you, you may say, well, look, he was buck naked. So obviously some stuff was going down and the types of drugs that were found in his, in the bag or whatever he had, it was stuff that is used in those types of situations to kind of like muscle relaxers and some other things that they said were found. Those are things that are sometimes used when it comes to activities like that, if you get my drift and I'm trying not to go too in detail and in depth with that. But he never said anything about any sexual activity. So I was trying to figure out, well, why are you saying that you have been bisexual for years? And his wife, she pretty much said, yeah, I knew about it. I've known about it for years and it's nobody's business. Not even that he told me just for him to have to say it. I don't think it's anyone's business. Well, nobody was prying into their lives. This is something that happened. It came out. Everybody knew about it, so of course people are gonna be talking about it. So nobody's trying to pry into their personal information and into their personal lives. It's just when what happened and has been put out there for the public to be able to see and to talk about. So when he made that statement about him being bisexual for years, I just was trying to figure out, well, why are you saying that if you know nothing really went down sexually? He was just talking about the drugs and going to rehab. You know, nothing nothing of the sort of, you know, I was unfaithful to my wife or anything like that. Nothing like that was said. It was completely embarrassing, but I, again, believe that it was his own downfall because those are choices and decisions that he made. And then he was trying to make it like it was nothing. I was just meeting up with some friends. I was down in Miami for a wedding and nobody that I don't I don't believe that that was all that it was. And now that this escort has come out and said that pretty much, you know, yeah, I know Andrew Gillum said those things, but he's a liar. That's pretty much what he's saying. He said that Gillum knowingly took drugs that night. So he's saying that Andrew Gillum is a liar. And a lot of people are coming out and saying that this marriage that he has, it really doesn't seem like it was real to begin with. It was sort of like one of those maybe business setup arrangements. I want to be in politics. I have to have a certain look. I have to supposedly live a certain type of lifestyle. So let's just do this together. Let's have some kids. Let's, you know, let's be on this journey together. But you and I know what it really is. And hey, if that's the choices and decisions that they wanted to make, then so be it. But him doing what he did, it made everything just 100% look sloppy and... I don't think he could ever have a comeback in politics. And I'm not saying that politics is squeaky clean because we all know that it's not. I know I've read a number of headlines in the past where some staunch Republican who is against all types of things where it regards gay marriage and this and that and the other and against abortion and all these other things where they got busted with another man and they're married to a woman and has kids. So, I mean, a lot of them are liars and hypocrites. It's just when you're busted and these stories come out and it's like, yeah, you, okay, now you are 
a certified hypocrite. And that's pretty much what it's making Andrew Gillum look like a certified hypocrite. Unfortunately, that is what it is. He might be a nice guy. I don't know him. Um, he said that he was going through a depression after he lost the gubernatorial election for the the office of governor of Florida. And he very well may have. But to do all the things that he did and then this comes out, it's just like, I don't really see him coming back from this. But yeah, guys, this is what the escort Travis Dyson is saying. He's saying, Andrew Gillum is a liar. He knowingly took drugs that night. And no, I didn't have any ill intentions when I took those images, but you know, I actually took care of him and another male escort that came, he was the one that called 911. So it was like, they really were trying to get down and have a lot of fun because like another male escort came to the room as well. So it wasn't even just between the two of them. Pretty crazy situation, but anyway guys, Please let me know your thoughts about all of this in the comment section. Thank you so much for liking, commenting, and subscribing. And until the next video, I'm just being beautifully honest.